in the long run of what you are. It goes back to like when, when uh, William Shakespeare wrote that play, Julius Caesar. Very historical, very, very interesting. I don't know if you've ever, I've read it myself. And at one point, you know, Caesar is making all these conquests. He comes back to Rome in triumph. They set him up to be an emperor. And of course, the others were jealous of his success. Of course, uh, there was, uh, there were a whole host of senators there that what were mad at Caesar because they thought, who is Caesar? You know, Brutus and Cassius, Metellus Cimber, Publius, all these different senators. And the question was asked, what meat hath Caesar eaten whereby he hath waxed so great? What did Caesar eat that made him so great? And see what Paul is talking about here, he's referring to that very same thing. There's nothing you can eat that would make you any better than you are right now. There's nothing you can eat that would make you worse. Now there might be things you eat would make you sick. And some things are beneficial to your body, but he's talking about you as a person, spiritually. There is nothing that you can eat that would make you great. What meat hath Caesar eaten, whereby he hath waxed so great? What makes him think he can be the emperor? What meat did he have? See? So, he's saying here, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. Makes no difference. But, take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee which hast knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? Now, we need to understand how it was back there. This went on every day. They would take sacrifices, animal sacrifices, to the temple. They would take that sacrifice and divide it into thirds. One third was for the god or goddess. One third of that animal was for the priest. And then the other third was sold in the marketplace. All right, now you could go to market and not all animals necessarily were sacrificed to the idols. Many of them were. But if you went to the market to buy meat, the markets were called the shambles. You ever read in the Bible, whatever soever is sold in the shambles, go ahead and eat it, you know. It, you know, you don't know where it came from necessarily. You don't have to. But if somebody says, this came from an idol, then don't take it. For conscience sake. So one third of it was sold in the market. One third went to the priests. Now what the priests often did, they couldn't eat all that meat themselves. So they sold it to the, the temple restaurant. Yes, the temples had a restaurant in them. And you could go in there and they were running specials, I suppose, now and then. I don't know, maybe... You know, Zeus burgers are, you know, three for a, a drachma or whatever. And uh, you could be sure that what was being served in the temple restaurant had been offered to an idol. So he's saying there, if you went into the temple, and by the way, the food was very, very inexpensive in the temple restaurant, far less than you could buy it for in the market. So most people were looking for a deal. They still do, don't they? They're looking for a good deal. Looking for a good buffet somewhere. Pay six dollars and pig out. You know, this sort of, but anyway, the, the food in the, the temple restaurant was very, very inexpensive. And so most people ended up there from time to time. So now the Christians, of course, 
were prone to go in and sit down in this temple restaurant. Now, it was nothing like the restaurants today. They didn't have the, you know, it was old-fashioned, put it that way. But it was still a restaurant. And if you saw a Christian brother, now you had knowledge of the fact this is, the Lord had really convicted you. This, this is, you got to stay out of that place. But you saw your brother in there just pigging out on Zeus burgers. Would it bother you? Now the Zeus burger wouldn't hurt him if he says, this means nothing to me. But it means something to you. You know? It'd be like if I would go in one of those places and I'm, and they say, yeah, there's the old man again. <clears throat> and they're getting his Zeus burgers. Huh? Right in the next room there's a big idol. And of course, the, the, you'd smell this cooking, you know, because they'd have these sacrifices going on all the time. So it would be roast beef in there all the time, you know, going up and, and off the altar. And you know, they never bothered asking the god or goddess if they wanted it well, medium well, <laughs> medium rare. They got it only one way, well done, burnt to a crisp. Because they burned the sacrifice up. So they didn't give the, their God that option of how he wanted it served. So his one third was actually burnt up into nothing. The other third was cooked and served in the restaurant and the other third sold in the market. And so idolatrous meat was everywhere. What Paul is saying is if you didn't know it came from an idol, don't ask. And don't worry about it. But to go into a temple where you know for a fact it was offered to an idol and served in the idol's temple, that's quite another matter, isn't it? That could offend people. That would bother me and should bother you. So, this is what he's saying here. For if any man see thee which hast knowledge, you know better, so what if the Zeus burgers are three for a drachma? You've got to pay twice, three times that much in the marketplace, then cook it yourself. It's so convenient to just drop in there and get your, your big Zeus or your uh, Mick Zeus or whatever. Huh? For if any man see thee which hast knowledge, you know better, sit at meat in the idol's temple. Shall not the conscience of him which is weak, meaning the one who doesn't have that knowledge that you have. See, you have knowledge that the meat is just meat. That's all you're thinking of. You're not going in there because you want to worship the idol. You just want a Zeus burger. Right? You're not going in to worship. But this other person doesn't have the knowledge that you have. That's what it means by weak. It means they just don't have, they're weak in that knowledge. Be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols. It's going to reinforce idolatry in their mind. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. Because what happens is that's only the beginning. Once their faith is damaged through lack of knowledge then it leads on from one thing to the next and pretty soon they're defiled in many ways and they could perish. But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. So if there's something that we would eat that would offend somebody else, don't eat it in front of them. Don't offend. Don't purposely offend. Okay? Okay? 